Is America's primary system working? Is the Electoral College still the best process for electing a president? Could a third-party candidate ever be successful? In a new season of You Might Be Right, former Tennessee governors Bill Haslam and Phil Bredesen gather the country's top experts to explore these issues and more as we approach the 2024 presidential election. Listen to You Might Be Right, a new podcast from the Baker School at the University of Tennessee, available now wherever you get your podcasts. There's nothing quite like the Honda Accord Hybrid and the CRV Hybrid when it comes to exhilarating efficiency. With hybrid technology and thrilling capability, these vehicles deliver an electrifying performance on every drive. But what truly makes these hybrids special is the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. Redefine your driving experience with Honda, KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. Based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Welcome to News Du Jour. You may be wondering, why am I, Annie Bowles, here hosting this podcast? I usually start by telling people I'm a political baby. You see, my parents met working on Capitol Hill. By the time I was two, I had been in my first political commercial and even got lost crawling around the West Wing. Don't worry, Al Gore found me. My family then moved abroad when I was nine, and I attended an international school in Brussels with kids from all over the world, and it is this type of global perspective that I also bring to our show. I graduated from American University in D.C. after studying political science and art history, as well as interning on both sides of Capitol Hill. I even interned down the hall from where my parents met. I'm now pursuing a professional certificate in journalism at NYU in conjunction with Rolling Stone magazine. I guess I was always that friend in the group who cared deeply about not just what was going on politically, but also globally. I often kept my own friends informed through high school and into young adulthood, so I guess I've always done a version of this show. I'm genuinely passionate about following the news, and I'm here to break it down for you guys every weekday. We always strive to be a calmer space to get your news, or as one listener put it, like getting your news from a well-informed bestie. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, everyone. So I wanted to issue a correction here at the top of this episode. If you guys have been following us for a while, you know we always put corrections right at the top so you can't miss them. We covered the tragic death of Nex Benedict last week, and we misgendered them in our coverage of their story. Because using correct pronouns is important to us, we chose to take that episode down and we plan to re-record it with the proper pronouns used and put it back in your feed. So if you guys see a random episode from last week has shown up in your feed again, that will be why. This was my mistake as the host of this show, the person who writes it and records it, and it's something I want to apologize for. Use of pronouns is a way in which we honor each other's identities, so getting nexus right is the least I can do. I'm so sorry to the family, my heart is with you, and I always have and always will stand for trans safety, celebration, and respect. Again, I just wanted to remind you guys that we do put corrections at the top of the episode if we ever have them just so that you guys can't miss them. The last thing we'd ever want to do is misrepresent a story or a person. And so we make sure that we get it right as soon as we can. For today's episode, we have three mini stories for you guys. And then honestly, let's see, one, two, three, 
four longer stories. It is going to be a packed day of news and I didn't even get to everything I wanted to touch on. So tomorrow will be packed as well. Let's jump in. So the onstage Devil Wears Prada reunion really stole the show at the SAG Awards over the weekend, you guys. Apparently, Emily Blunt said Meryl Streep and Miranda Priestly were, quote, sort of like twins, end quote. And when Streep obviously protested, quote, I don't think I'm anything like Miranda Priestly, end quote, Anne Hathaway cut her off and said, no, no, that wasn't a question end quote, which is obviously one of the movie's many iconic one-liners. Love to see it. It was just a fun, playful way to, you know, have fun at these awards. Next up in our mini stories, I want to let you guys know that an owl named Flacco, who had captured many hearts in New York City after being dramatically freed from the zoo, has died. He reportedly crashed into a building on West 89th Street, and he was 13 years old when he passed away. This was something that conservationists at the zoo were obviously really worried about. You see, owls are a lot safer in captivity. But New York's rebel heart was really enjoying seeing the little guy hanging out in Central Park with them rather than trapped at the zoo. And plus, the NYPD was pretty challenged when it came to trying to recapture him. He spent a year on the run, but as the zookeepers had predicted, he died early due to the city's challenges for birds. For our next mini story, unfortunately, the measles outbreak in Florida is growing. Two more children, in addition to the original six, now have the measles. The Florida Surgeon General is leaving it up to parents whether or not they want to send their kids back to school, and that's actually getting him a lot of flack because a lot of people are worried that this will cause further spread of the measles. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. And for our first longer story today, I wanted to let you guys know that Donald Trump beat Nikki Haley in South Carolina. So Donald Trump beat Nikki Haley in South Carolina in the Republican primaries by a landslide, you guys, which is more than a little embarrassing for Nikki as this is her home state and candidates tend to do better with a home court advantage. Trump won with about 20 points over Haley, too. So again, not a good look for her going forward. But before this state's election, Nikki vowed to continue the race after South Carolina, no matter what happened. So it appears she plans to continue her race, raising her own public platform in the process and raking in all of the non-Trump Republican funding that she can find. And there's a lot of it. As we talked about before on this show, Nikki has done really well with fundraising late in the game here, but it's just not showing up in the polls. And unfortunately for her, that's the only place it really counts. Some news outlets have said that this is not a political race, but rather a coronation. And that's definitely how things seem to be shaking out. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. So next up for today, Wayne LaPierre is found liable for fraud. So a jury has found former NRA leader Wayne LaPierre liable in a civil case brought against him by none other than Letitia James, the same AG bringing the civil charges against Trump. According to CBS News, the jury deliberated for five days, finally agreeing that LaPierre and his co-defendants failed to properly perform their duties in good faith. Why? You see, he misused NRA funds on things like chartered private jets for personal use, acceptance of lavish gifts, and more. It all added up to millions in misspent funding, according to the New York Times coverage. They also found that the organization ignored whistleblower complaints, which is against federal guidelines and a series of other infractions. A judge will determine the sentencing for the defendants, including Wayne LaPierre, but Letitia asked that the defendants be forced to repay the NRA what they had stolen, 
and then be barred from returning to leadership positions there or at any other nonprofit in the state of New York. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. So for our next story, we're going to be talking about the aftermath of the Alabama court decision that ruled embryos are children. Let's jump in. So there's a couple different points to go over here, but I want to start with the fact that more Alabama facilities have paused IVF treatments. This is because they are now suddenly open to new liabilities and they need time to adjust their protocol. Because keeping embryos frozen forever and ever is really not part of any fertility clinic's game plan nationwide, globally. But for now, in Alabama, it has to be in order to avoid further legal action, which unfortunately has been coming out in droves. More lawsuits are now coming out of the woodworks as there has been other incidents in which labs accidentally unintentionally destroyed embryos. And now that the court system has proven in Alabama that that is a wrongful death, couples have been suing fertility clinics left and right. Clinics and couples are also wondering what to do with extra embryos that are not needed. As I understand it, when a couple is struggling to conceive, It is common practice to create as many healthy embryos as possible, hoping that one will take. Once that couple has one or two babies that they were hoping for or decide to stop treatment for another reason, what happens to these embryos now? Will they have to pay to forever keep these embryos frozen? It is standard practice right now across the board to discard them. But now that they are considered children, this could constitute wrongful death at a minimum, if not like a manslaughter or murder charge. It has come out that the judge in this case also was a religious zealot, you guys. There's just no other way to describe it. He invoked the quote unquote wrath of a holy God in carrying down his position, his decision His written opinion referenced the book of Genesis, the prophet Jeremiah, as well as 16th and 17th century church teachings. Regardless of religious leanings, we have something called separation of church and state in our country for a reason. There are many Christian couples that I know who have chosen to discard embryos that did not have a good chance of survival or after they've been able to conceive. His sense of religion and right and wrong is not everyone else's. And that is why we have separation of church and state. And now that he has imposed his own version of Alabama laws, IVF couples are going to be the ones who are ultimately paying the price in their pursuit of a healthy living child. And lastly, for today, we're going to be going over some Navalny updates. There's just two of them, but I wanted to make sure you guys were up to date. First and foremost, his body was returned to his mother. Fortunately, the Russian opposition leader's body has been returned to his mother specifically. There were reports coming out claiming that Russian authorities had been blackmailing his family into holding his funeral in private. Obviously, a public funeral would stir up emotion and sympathy for his cause within Russia and also garner international attention to the fact that he was killed within a Russian prison at the Kremlin's behest. That said, it seems that the family is planning a funeral, but of what kind, we're not sure yet. We'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. And then for our final story today, major sanctions have been put on Russia. So the quote unquote major sanctions that the Biden administration has alluded to have been put in place. This is the most extensive round of sanctions to be put on Russia since the war began in Ukraine, according to the New York Times. The sanctions target over 500 individuals and entities that are linked to Russia's attack of Ukraine, including three officials more directly connected to Navalny's death. 
So it's kind of two birds, one stone. Help Ukraine and make a statement to Putin about his killing of Navalny. And that for today is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote. I found the secret of the sea in a meditation upon a dew drop. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review on that platform or a shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us to be able to keep creating the news du jour and reach more people who need a calmer space to consume the news. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. And that is also linked in our show notes. You can follow us on social media at newsdujour.podcast on both Instagram and TikTok. You can follow my personal account at it's Annie Bowles on both platforms as well. Any little noises you may hear in the background are my rescue pup. He has a little separation anxiety and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from You might be right. It's simple, but something you almost never hear in politics today, with each side more concerned about scoring political points than solving problems. I'm Bill Haslam, a Republican. And I'm Phil Bredesen, a Democrat. We're former Tennessee governors, and we invite you to listen to our podcast, You Might Be Right. Join us and guests like Al Gore, Paul Ryan, Judy Woodruff, as we take on important issues facing our country. Listen and subscribe to You Might Be Right, a new podcast from the Baker School at the University of Tennessee.